Hi guys, there's lots of boot reviews out there, but they're almost all from companies trying to sell products. And I thought I would go ahead and make a boot review. I'm just an average dude from the Midwest who likes to snowboard and has some experience and thought I'd share some uh, thoughts on these two boots. So I'm gonna just do a quick review of the Vans Envato OG and the Burton Ruler today. I do have a more in-depth video on each of these boots if you wanna go check that out. I'd like to treat this video more like a comparison video and just walk through the features of each boot at the same time. Uh, that way I can show you what the manufacturers focus on as far as the design of all the parts of the boot from the sole to the inside of the shell to the harness to the liner and just to the exterior of the boot and the uh, lacing system and the feel and whatnot. So uh, it's a bit of an unfair comparison. I know the Burton Ruler is more expensive. It's somewhere around 300 bucks, 309 while the Vans and Vados are somewhere around 220 right now. Um, so they're a little cheaper, but that doesn't mean they're lacking in quality. So I'll just show you some of uh, what I like about both of these boots. Okay, I'm gonna show you the inside of each of the shells now. We'll start off by looking at the Vans and Vado, and down there all the way at the bottom, you'll see the sole of the boot from the inside. It's just lined with a regular type of white material down there, um, nothing too crazy. Um, the harness here, this is what Vans calls the V1 harness, and V1 harness looks like it's attached to the shell in four places on each side here, and it's a pretty good sized harness that should provide some pretty good heel hold um, here from the front. You'll see that. Um, some lighting there, so pretty robust harness. Here's the uh, lashing system. You just pull on, just like most boots, you just kind of pull your lashing up and put, push this, this lock down and it, it will uh, hold it tight. And then to loosen it, you just pull on the red strap. Um, now we'll look at the Burton Ruler. Burton Ruler, uh, inside of the ruler, has a, you'll see the bottom of the sole down there is lined with a foil type of material. That foil is supposed to reflect your body heat back up into your foot to keep you warmer. Um, also, they say there's some kind of gel. It's called B3 gel down in the in the sole to help uh, on the on the dampening. And you'll see the green harness. This is what Burton calls the cuff lock harness. The cuff lock, um, you'll see this, this green colored harness in here. Um, it's attached to about six points on each side. So a couple more attachment points, although the, stra the strapping is a little bit thinner. So the attachment's probably similar. You will notice on a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison here, which is one advantage of these kind of videos, um, the Vans harness is taller. It goes up, I would say, about an inch taller uh, on the inside here than the Burton. And the Burton does kind of advertise uh, a low-profile cuff lock. So they, they, they claim that it will um, ease the ability to get your your foot in and out of the boot should make it easier to take your your boot off if this cup lock is a little bit lower um, yet still retain good heel hold um, due to the attachment points and just how how big it is and how tall it is and how uh, kind of the big area of your foot that it covers um, also a difference is that on the, the the lock here it's a similar design but definitely is beefier definitely thicker and you do a side-by-side -side comparison the Burton one is is bigger it has more positive feel like a clicking when you when you shut it and pull on it kind of hear it there you cannot hear the the Vans one um, so little differences there okay we have the footbeds here now to compare uh, on the left we have the Vans the Vans you can see it's pretty thick it's really soft um, this is a just a single density foam. Vans calls this the pop cush uh, footbed. Um, it's definitely soft, and if you hold it up to the light, you can kind of see through the perforations here um, to add a little bit of airflow. And it's a little, little bit of a nice uh, cup here for your heel. Um, on the other side, we have the Burton Ruler. Um, this is what Burton calls the 4EST optimized sole. Um, you can see it's a little thinner. It's not as soft. It's more of a more dense of a foam. However, it does look like it provides some good support. It does have a nice cup there. It has a like a lower ramp angle, they call it. Um, 
a little bit of a shock pad, a little bit more foam right here on their heel. Some bigger perforations, you can see it through the, right there for airflow. Um, anyway, that's the difference in the two. Okay, now we'll talk about the liners next. Um, starting off with the Vans. The Vans liner is called the V1 Ultra Cush liner. And it's uh, designed to be a little bit on the softer side and, and forgiving. Um, it looks very warm. It's got the dual Velcro closure at the top. Um, opens up. It's ultra soft inside. The blue material almost feels like foam. It's really soft. And the top of it is crazy soft. It makes you want to just curl up and take a nap on it. Like it, uh, it's super soft and you can tell it would be very comfortable. Uh, it has a little bit of neoprene material here on the toe um, for uh, comfort as well and kind of flexibility. Um, on, the vein, on the Burton side, you have what the Burton calls the Imprint 2 liner. Imprint 2 liner also has a double Velcro closure. Um, you'll see that the Velcro is a lot, a lot more surface area on the Velcro, so it does hold better. Um, the top of it is also soft. It's not nearly as soft as the Vans, but it has what they call man fur on top just to make it a little bit softer. Um, and it's also pretty soft on the inside when you feel it. It feels pretty soft. Um, and it, it's got more support in it. It's a little bit stiffer, but not too stiff. It has a J-bar support, internal and external, on both sides there. Um, and there you, there you have it for the liners. The V1 Ultra Cush and the Imprint 2. I can add that both of these liners are heat moldable, so that means you can take them to your pro shop um, and they can help you do a heat molding. And that means that they can fit it right to your, your exact foot and get that precise fit uh, just for your foot and get, you know, fit like a glove. And that's on both of these things. Now for the fun part of the video, we're going to talk about the exterior of the boots. We're going to talk about the overall look and feel, the lacing systems, and the sole of the boots. Um, we'll start off with the Vans. So for the Vans, the Vans have that classic look, that skater shoe look. I really like the look of the Vans. Uh, I rate the look, you know, a notch above the Burton, but that's just my favorite uh, style, I guess, of boot or favorite look. Um, this model, the Envato OG, there, it's available in this blue color, and they have another one that's all black with a white stripe. Um, as far as the lacing system, it's a hybrid system, meaning that it has both. It has traditional laces and a BOA on the side that controls your heel hold, which I'll show you. Um, the traditional laces all obviously give you uh, the, the best customization of fit out there, and it's the most straightforward system and fail-proof, I guess, system. So it's not going to leave you hanging. It's not, it's not likely to break on you. Um, not that the BOA is, is unreliable, but um, a lace has nothing to break, basically, you know. Um, the, the BOA system on the side actually tightens up this little thing here, which, is, which they call the custom slide guide. So the custom slide guide, you can move it side to side and position it where you like it. And then you tighten up the BOA on the side and it tightens that up for your heel. And that, that can get you a really good heel hold. <clears throat> I really do like this, this uh, slide guide and the heel hold that it gives you. I do think it gives you actually a little bit better of a heel hold uh, just with that there. Plus the traditional lacing lets you, lets you get it just as tight as you need it and uh, wherever you like it to be tight at. And some of the higher end Vans boots, they have, you know, straps across the top and um, they, they make dual BOA models and different models of the Vans boot. But um, that is the lacing system. As far as the sole goes, the sole on the Vans is the V1 waffle lug pattern. Again, the traditional kind of skater shoe pattern. It appears to be some sort of rubber material, it's, so it should be very durable. A lot of traction here on the sole. For the back of the boot, uh, I've already talked about the liner and how soft it is, the Ultra Kush liner. Um, this, this white area on the top of the, the back of the boot is called the Pleasure Cuff 
kind of a silly, funny name, but um, it really is soft. You see how uh, flexible it is. So you have the Ultra Cush liner paired with this pleasure cuff around the, the back top of the boot. Really makes it really comfortable back there. You're not going to get any calf bite on these boots. Um, if you're out there all day on the slopes, some people have trouble with your calves getting sore. That should not be a problem with the Vans boots. Um, also, the back stay on the Vans boots isn't quite as stiff. This boot overall fit and uh, stiffness level, I guess, is a, about a medium to soft, four or five, I would say. Um, you try it on, wear it around. It feels good right out of the box, um, but it definitely is more flexible uh, on the back and especially back here. You do have a, a kind of a finger hold here to help you put the boots on. It's not a real big one, but it is helpful if you need it. Um, a couple things to read on the label. It does remind you that the BOA does have a lifetime warranty on the Vans BOA, the brakes. And it also says something about a some kind of scent, scent protection layer that, that is on these boots. And also there's uh, for extra warmth, there's some kind of insulation in the toe box area that should add to the, the warmth. So the Burtons are a little bit cleaner of a design. By that I mean they're pretty straightforward, just a single color pattern. I got the navy blue boots here, but they have different ones, um, different colors and different lacing systems. I have the dual boa here. We'll talk about that. But they also make a laced version and a speed zone lacing version of this boot. Um, and the boa does add a little bit of cost for the dual boa, but it does have its benefits. Um, and we'll go ahead and talk about that, I guess. The dual zone boa has obviously two boas. The, the one on the tongue controls the upper portion and the one on the side controls the lower portion. So you pop out the boa, that allows you to loosen it up. And this is an H4 coiler. And that just means for every four rotations of the, of the, of the coil, it only wraps the, the actual rope around it once. So it's really able to fine tune. You're able to get as much, um, adjustment as you want out of these boots. So you tighten it, push it back in, and then you just crank it up, and that's how you tighten the top. And the side one lets you tighten the bottom down there. So it is fast. It lets you put your foot in, in and get to the slopes. You can put your, your, your boot on pretty quickly and get it tightened up how you like it. It also lets you adjust it uh, pretty well in two, in two zones, you know, get it as tight as you like it in both areas. Um, it doesn't quite have the heel hold of the Vans, you know, or at least I, to me it doesn't. That's my opinion. Um, but it is fast and it is easy and it is clean. It does look good. One more thing to point out is the Burton Boas are actually made with New England ropes, which are really strong. And while the Boa system is available on lots of different brands of boots, the New England ropes are proprietary, I guess, or only on the Burtons. So that's something a little different. They have lifetime warranties, but the BOA system has a lifetime warranty on the Vans as well. Um, you'll see the sole is, is really uh, thin along here and they do that on purpose. They try to lower, get your foot lower down to help lower your center of gravity. Um, and they also have remind you that they have those V3 gel inserts inside. So even though they have a thinner sole, it does still have some padding and damping in there. Now the bottom of the sole is uh, a combination of foam and rubber. The white area is foam, and you can definitely tell it's foam by feeling it. Um, and it, they do that to get uh, lightness. You know, the boots lighter. The more foam you use, the lighter it is. Um, and the blue is the rubber they put on there for durability and traction. So just a comparison here on the soles, you'll see. You'll see uh, how thick this one is compared to how thin that one is. And that is a common theme actually when comparing these two boots. The Burton actually is made with what they call reduction footprint technology. And that just means that for a given size, the actual uh, measurements of the outside of the boot are smaller compared to another brand of that same size. So you could get a size 10 boot um, in a Vans compared to a size 10 boot in the Burton. The Burton should be, you know, a little bit smaller dimensions uh, when measured lengthwise and, and girthwise around 
around there. And actually, we'll do a little test right now uh, on that. And here's my test on this so-called shrinkage footprint technology from Burton. Uh, these Vans and Vados are actually size 10, and my Burtons are actually size 10 and a half. So in theory, the Burtons should be bigger, right, when you measure them from the outside. So let's test that. Um, I got the, the boot pressed all the way against the wall here, and I'm going to mark um, the toe where it comes on this paper. Now we'll put the Burton there. The same spot. And it is almost exactly in the same spot. Um, I can't even mark it differently. It's the same spot. Um, so, however, remember this is a half size larger. So that tells me that, you know, girth wise and kind of bulkiness wise, the Burton is running about a half size smaller exterior wise. So you can, you can put your foot in your binding and you should see a little bit smaller of a, of a, of a surface area um, compared to the vans. You put that in your binding, you're probably gonna need to loosen your, your strap up a notch on your binding because this is a pretty tall, kind of bulky uh, boot. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's soft and comfortable and warm. And one advantage of having a smaller footprint is actually having less toe drag. So the theory is if you can get your overall length down a little bit, you'll have less toe drag or less of your boot sticking off the front of your board there. On the Burton boots, on the, uh, the back side here, the back stays a little quite a bit stiffer than the Burton. The, the Burton boots are uh, still a mid-range boot as far as stiffness goes, but they're more of like a five-ish instead of, instead of on the lower end. Um, so they're a little stiffer. Um, they are they are still soft where your calf goes, not nearly as soft as the vans, but they do have this nice fur type of material here, and this area of the boot is flexible, so it's it's uh, it would be nice uh, on your calves also. And they do have this really nice strap to help put your boots on and just to carry around. Really is what I find them handy for. And you want to grab your boots, carry them around with that. So you guys can form your own opinion on these boots, but I'll, I'll tell you what my opinion is. Um, they both have pros and cons. Um, the Burton rulers, a little bit more expensive, and they also have the dual BOA coilers. They're easier to put on and off, which is nice, um, especially if you have a lot of stuff to do and you're always in a hurry when you get to the slopes, right? So you, you wanna put your boot on quick and get going. Um, it's still comfortable, it's still soft, uh, not as soft as the Vans, but it does, it is easy to put your boot on and off. That cuff lock system on the inside, being a little bit uh, lower, I think helps get your foot in and out a little bit easier. Um, the material is a little bit stiffer. The whole boot overall is a little bit stiffer. Um, the boot still has good traction. It's quite a bit lighter. Um, to do kind of a weight test, I, I basically step on my bathroom scale, my digital scale, um, holding the Vans boots, and then I did it again holding the Burton's boots, and I was about 1.2 pounds lighter holding the Burton boots. So that tells me the boots are about a half a pound a piece lighter on the Burton side, and they definitely feel light. I think they're about two pounds total, so one pound each. Definitely feel lighter than these um, when you grab a Burton boot. So that if you're gonna be walking around and stuff, um, these definitely feel lighter and they definitely are smaller. Like I showed you, the footprint overall is a, is more compact on the Burton. Um, it's kind of a plain style, which some people like the clean style. The Burton logo is good. The Burton brand is good. Um, I really like the little carry straps. You would be surprised how many times you're trying to carry your gear around and you only have a couple fingers free with all your gear and you can just grab these, and carry them around. That's handy. Um, on the Vans, I really like the Vans. I, um, I like the Vans look. It's my favorite look. Um, I, to me, it looks better than the Burton. That's just my style, I guess. Um, it's super soft. Now, if you're uh, kind of a newer to the sport and more of a beginner, um, you'll probably need that extra softness and forgiveness of a boot. And these are super soft on the back, uh, on the back edge.
So that would be nice if you were a, a beginner and just, or if you only went, went a couple times a year, you know, if you don't have a lot of time to go, these will probably be just, just what you need. You know, they're, they're cheaper price point and that's, that matters sometimes if you have a limited budget. Um, I do like the, the hybrid lacing system. I like the traditional laces let you get it as tight as you want, where you want. And then that custom slide guide with a boa really gets you some really good heel hold. I really think the heel hold is better in this boot. Um, time will tell, but um, a little bit softer. Um, now, being that they are a little bit cheaper, uh, and a little bit softer, you do wonder how the durability will be. And I can't really tell you about that because I haven't used them that long of a time. So feel free to put in your comments if you guys have a pair of these and you've been wearing them a long time. Let me know how they hold up for you. Um, I guess I would I would guess that since these are softer, they're probably gonna have a little bit of wear, uh, make some kind of creases and whatnot as you as you as you wear them, as you walk around in them quite a lot. If you're gonna go to the hit the mountain every single day in the season, they'll probably wear out uh, on you um, the, the soft material. But but um, but Vans is also a good brand, been around for a very long time and know what they're doing, making shoes and boots. Um, one thing I noticed with the Burtons, just because they're a little bit more expensive, doesn't mean they won't wear out too. Um, I've only been wearing these around in my house, and I already have a, a nice size wrinkle right here in this material, so they're going to wear just the same as any other boot. Um, I like how they're both heat moldable liners, should be able to get a great fit that way. Um, I guess a quick tip, most of us have to order our boots online now. If we're not lucky enough to live right next to a, a good pro shop to go try on lots of different kinds of boots so when you're ordering online just a quick tip um, find a company that has great shipping prices and return policy because you need to try these boots on after you get them they do fit a little bit differently every brand has their own feel um, you might need to send them back and try a different size so make sure you're not paying too much to return shipping i know I ended up going with Zappos, even though I've never ordered from them before, but they have free returns and free shipping. Um, so I've already had to get a couple different pair due to the sizing. Uh, you know, in the Vans, I found I need to get about a half size bigger. Just experiment with your sizing, read your, read your tips online. They both claim their true, true size, you know, true to fit. Um, however, I think the Vans definitely need a half size bigger and the Burtons are borderline on needing half size bigger. Um, and other than that, that's that's all I can tell you. Um, it's really up to your personal preference and your budget. And there's a million other brands and models out there that you could try. Also, I just wanted to show you a little bit about these two these two boots and let you guys hear it from an average dude, uh, just like you guys. And uh, happy boarding! And hope this video helped you guys out.